there, welcome to Floating in Dreams. Today's video is going to be a swatch out of all of my ColourPop single eyeshadows. Welcome to everybody watching today. If you are into eyeshadow palettes, Essence and Catrice, and getting the use out of your makeup the way I am, then definitely stay tuned because in today's video I'm going to be swatching out all of my ColourPop single shadows. And this is something I have been doing every single month for the past year. I have been coming on here to swatch out my single eyeshadows that are in these like pans that I've put in palettes just so I get a good feel for what I've got going on. And I felt it, it's really helped me with getting to know my singles collection a lot better and then being able to create some custom palettes throughout the year that I can play around with. So this series has been really helpful for me and I hope it's been also very helpful for you seeing all of those swatches that I have already been doing. I'll make sure to link all of those other videos I've done below because I feel that this is the last time I can do this because I now have will have swatched out all of my singles that I keep in palettes. And in case you're new here, it may be good to know that I have fair skin with a cool to neutral undertone, which greatly skews my makeup references. And because I have been buying, trying and reviewing makeup for more than a decade, I also have some very strong favorites. So yes, uh, if you'd like to join the Snow Angel Club, then click subscribe down below. Let's get to these shadows. So I have two palettes here that house my ColourPop single eyeshadows. And yes, did you know ColourPop does single eyeshadows? This is something that I just recently just checked when I placed my Black Friday order with them. Just to see, do they still do these? Because nobody talks about these anymore. And I feel that when these were launched, they got quite a bit of hype. These were only like a few dollars for a pan. And as you can see, I built myself two palettes and it's kind of like the way I've got them organized is a gradient with like our neutrals here that we get some warm tones, some pinks going into like these like cocky shades. And then we get some more colorful things here with the greens, blues, purples, and again, some pinky mauvey things. There are shades in here that I love. There are also shades in here where I'm like, why do I have this? Um, so I definitely need to go through this and be very critical. And in 2023, I'm sure that when I do a makeup decluttering series, I'm going to also declutter some of my single shadows. Now that I've swatched everything, that I know what I've got going on, I think I can edit it down. And I think this is going to be part of that editing down process for sure, and then reorganize all the palettes and whatever, etc. But there are a couple of shades here that I'm like, yeah, I'd like to keep those around. But there's also some here where I'm like, why do I have that? I don't need that from ColourPop per se. So let me get swatching and show you what all of these shades are. I think what I'll do, because they kind of are organized in little columns like that, I'll just go column for, uh, for column going in that direction. So we've got a lot of swatching going on here. So let me just get to it. And this is the first shade here. And this is Let Me Explain. This is one of those shades where I'm like, why do I have this? This is something I have a million times over in my collection. So I don't think I need this. It seems to be a nice shiny, metallic-y sort of light shimmer shade. So it's like a peachy gold, perhaps a bit more unique than I thought at first glance, but in the pen it definitely just looks like any other champagne shade you might come across. This is Hear Me Out and this is like a matte creamy shade. This is one that if I were to declutter this, it will probably get some more use out of it because these shades are perfect for setting your eye base with. So that's what I probably will keep this around for. And there's that shade. Look at how close that is to my skin tone. I think it will be perfect as a setting shade. This is Take the Lead and this is a really pretty cool tone brown. Like I said, it's a really nice cool tone brown here, a little bit of taupiness there, but I think I have things like this from MAC, from Sydney Grace that I think are just too similar to this. And this is made to last. And if I'm not mistaken, this is a shade that actually did end up in one of my custom singles palette this year. Um, it's like a rosy brown shade. It's definitely a little bit more unique. And there we have that shade. Like on my skin tone, it definitely seems to have a bit of peachiness to it, especially in the viewfinder. In real life, I feel it's got a bit more rosiness to it, but that's definitely a pretty one. Then we have this matte bright yellow. This is Take Flight. 
and that is a really good strong matte yellow. Like my Colourpop palettes are actually the only ones that have like singles that have some warmth and also that have some brights in them. Most of my singles are actually quite muted and more cool tone leaning because that's what I love. Um, but yeah, when I bought these Colourpop shades, I hadn't really figured that out yet. And I just sort of bought the shades that I thought were pretty, but that I didn't necessarily think I was going to use. And I have gotten there for some use out of these Colourpop palettes because whenever I want to do like recreate something or dupe something, these kind of... Uh, palettes have been really helpful because they precisely because they have shades that I don't have anywhere else in my singles collection. If you've heard anyone talking about Colourpop singles, you will have heard them talking about this. This is Paper Tiger. And Paper Tiger is perhaps one of the best mustard yellows ever released, ever. This is such a good shade, but again, by now, maybe not as unique anymore as it used to be. And this is Koi, which is not a shade you'd expect me to perhaps have, but this is a very light orange. So this is pretty, as you can see, even though it looks like it's something that's not going to work for me, it doesn't clash too much with my skin tone, I feel. I mean, something like this is much worse, as you'll see in a minute, but this is actually quite pretty. I like this. This is a good shade, but I feel it's too similar almost to Paper Tiger, and I like that better. Here we have Making Moves, which is like this corally pink. I mean, as a blush, I might wear this, but as eyeshadow, it's pink eye waiting to happen, which I'm not sure I'm totally down with. And now that I look at these like first eight shades that I've swatched, everything has been matte, save for the first shimmer. I didn't know I had so many mattes in here. Hmm. That may be actually a good reason to actually reconsider how much I want to declutter this by the time I get round to that, because we all know I love a shimmer over a matte, but it's good to have some good staple mattes. This is the shade Bratty. Yeah, this is just really not my shade, but if you want to do some like sunset eyes or, you know, for blending out a bright pink like that, it can actually work and it can look very pretty. And for how intense and vibrant this is, it feels very soft and it's got really good pigmentation, actually. I mean, these are good shadows. Now, this is one of those shades, as you can see, it's probably never been used. This is Solstice with the Mostest, but it's so pretty. I mean, it's a really nice, like, Barbie pink with that sort of blue flash to it. I mean, perhaps this should just go into my blue-green-purple palette. I don't know. It's perhaps too pink to really go with that, but I may have to branch out there. And here we have Sandbar, quite possibly one of the most vibrant pink max mattes I've ever seen. Look at that go. I mean, that's some really good pigmentation. Why does no one talk about these anymore? Like, that's good quality. Like, for a bright pink matte, to not have a white cast, to not be patchy, to be this smooth, I mean, and I believe this is the same shade, like this shade is in the Ooh La La or was in the Ooh La La. I don't know if they still do all of these anymore though. I wasn't sure whether this would be the one, but it is. This is Poodle, which is an infamous Colourpop shade. And this is perhaps a little bit more wearable as far as pinks go, but I feel this is too warm toned for my liking, like it clashes a little bit and I feel it's perhaps a little bit too similar to... Uh, that Making Move shade, this one right here. That's a bit more coral, perhaps. This is a bit more pink. This Peachy Shimmer is Ready or Yacht. I mean, this is so pretty. I mean, it's a warm tone, but it's very pretty. Look at that shine! I mean, for some skin tones, this may be perfect as a highlighter, actually. Not for me, it's a bit too dark and yellow, but this is great. Great inner corner highlight or to accentuate something, like do a halo eye with. This is Sauvage, which I believe is a satiny shade. This is very different from what I thought it was going to do. I mean, it's it looks like a straight up like peachy satin shade, right? Oh, you can see a little bit there already. Do you see that it's got a pink shift? I mean, you can see it perhaps a little bit better here. Yes, my finger is very stained from all the swatches, but it's got this really pretty shine. Here we have Heavy Glam. 
this is this oh yeah that this one is the same as sauvage it just has a bit of a stronger flip it's a bit darker that's probably why it works better it's got a stronger pink flip and it's got a stronger orange base and this is high strung I mean it's really pretty it's like a bronzy brown but it's got a pink quality to it I mean the viewfinder shows it up it shows up as orange but in real life it has this really soft rosiness to it which is very pretty now anyone who had ColourPop singles had this shade this is glass blue and this is one where I'm like yes it's pretty it's that sort of very glass like oil slick but very light it's got like a taupey base and then like the blue and green it's very pretty, but I'm like, don't I have something like this by Cleo Cleona by now? So it's definitely something that I may have to compare because I'm not sure how unique this is anymore. Now this has always been one of my favorite ColourPop shades. This is Snake Eyes. It's a taupey bronze. What else can I say? But do you just see that silvery flash it has? Maybe this should just go into my Cool Tone Neutrals palette. You know, it's a really good taupey shade. This is Misty. Yeah, this is pretty, but this is one of those shades where I'm like, yeah, th this is one I would very confidently be able to get rid of it and not miss it at all. And, fi and finally, we have Cute Alert. Here we have Cute Alert. Now, I don't buy a lot of silvers when I buy single shadows, and this is one of the reasons. This is on a whimsy. I mean, when it comes to silvers, you really only need one, and if you have one that's this good, do you need any others? I don't think so. Another one of my favorites, and I don't think you can still get this, this is Tea Garden. So where were we? My camera cut out because my battery was low, but this is Tea Garden and this is one of my favorite shades from ColourPop because it very much reminds me of the Natasha Denona Lime Chrome shade. It's got that sort of brown undertone, do you see, like brassiness to it, and then it's got the green and gold flip. It's very pretty. Here we have Sideline. And I feel this is pretty, but nah, not that, like, it, it just doesn't get my heart be beating any faster, really. And the final shade here is Team Captain. And this is actually one of the very few cocky greens in my entire makeup collection, or at least singles. So I have pulled this in, but now that I'm swatching it, I'm just not that impressed. Let's put this palette back together and move on to palette number two. This is Heavenly. And again, it's pretty, it's like a minty bluish green, but this I don't feel is very special. Now here we get to some shades that ColourPop had a very like exciting description for, and then I got it home and I felt a bit disappointed. The first one is Super Zoom. They called this a teal. I feel this is just a green. I mean, it's pretty, sure, but it's a little bit thin and patchy. I have better teals in my collection for sure. Now, I've never seen a tangerine that is this green tone, but this is tiny tangerines. And I remember liking this better than Super Zoom. I mean, this just has a bit more brightness to it. It's a bit brighter, but it seems... Like in the, in real life, it doesn't show up, but in the viewfinder, I feel it looks a bit patchy. And another shade that was described by ColourPop as a teal, but it's just a green. And this is Conjure Up, by the way. Look at that. To me, that's a forest green, not a teal. So this has always been a bit disappointing to, disappointing to me, but I mean, it's okay. But it's again, a little thin. So as a vibrant as for instance, Sandbar was, these don't hold a candle to it. 
This is sleigh fair. This feels very thin. Oh. That does absolutely nothing. Feels a bit hard as well. These aren't that old. Like my Inglot shadows are some of my oldest ones that I swatched for you last month. Those work a lot better than some of these do. Now remember, I quite like this. This is formation. But again, when I swatch it, it's so thin. What happened to these shades? Maybe they were never that great to begin with. Maybe that's why I never reach for them or think about these. Like if you build them up, they're fine, but. This is wishful winking. And from what it looks like in the pan, I think it's going to be one of those like blue brown kind of shades. Yeah, see, this is pretty, but I have Partridge from Makeup Geek still. I have a few V's and palettes. Like, I don't necessarily need this. In fact, no, Partridge. Is that the one by Makeup Geek? I have a so Super Shock that does this as well. Now, this is antimatter, and I've got a bit of sun coming in, and this is looking absolutely stunning in this light. In the pan, it looks like a purpley, bluish teal. Let's hope it swatches well. Oh. Oh, wow. See, this is what I hope these would do. Oh, look at that. I've got the right light coming in right now. It's got that deeper, like navy murky base, and then it's got the brighter tealy blue sparkle, but it's got that like purple flash. Like, let me see if I can show you that. Like it's got this hint of purple running through it. This is a very unique shade that I would never get rid of. A very pale periwinkle shimmer. This is baseline. And it's, it's very light, but you can see, like, it's got this really pretty sheen to it. That's a very pretty shade. Not necessarily unique enough, I think, to really keep it around in the long run, but that is a pretty shade. This is two-piece. Feels a little hard-pressed. Oh, this is fine. It's a little brighter than what I th thought it was going to be, like... Mm, I'm not entirely sure I love that. It's more of a satin as well. This is backstage. See, to me, there's barely any difference between this shade and the one I just swatched, two-piece. Like, they look pretty identical, but this is a matte, and the other one has a hint of shine. But this, this is okay. I have better bright blues in my collection. And this is another one I really remember liking. This is Quantum Sleep. Yeah, see, this is what I wanted to shade two-piece to do, but now that I've swatched it out, I again feel this isn't very unique. I think I have other things in my blue, green, purple palette that are far better than this and will give the same effect. Pale silvery blue, anyone? This is Beam Me Up. So this is a little softer of a silver compared to On A Whimsy, like that's far more full on. Like you can see it has that baby blue sort of shine to it. And it's got a bit of a sheer base. So I think this may be a silver that appeals to a lot of people because of it. Maybe very pretty if you do like a, a navy blue smoky eye and then you top this off with it somehow. This is pretty and it's quite unique actually. So this may be another one that you know, if I were to do a declutter in the future, that this is one I need to keep in mind that I might want to keep it around. We're getting into the purples. This is Fault Line. Now, as far as purples go, this is very pretty. It's got that soft purpley base, and then it's got that blue flash. But if you've seen me swatching out some of my, like, fun shimmers, I have a fun shimmer palette, which has a lot of Cleona round pants, and I have several of these blue, purple, purple, blue, blurple kind of shades. So again, I feel this is just not unique enough in my collection. Neutrino is a purple, but it's, I think it's a bit warm tone for my liking. Yeah, this is just not really my kind of purple. Like if you have a very strong warm undertone, this is stunning on you because it just has this like reddish plum sort of undertone and then a brighter purple flash. It's very pretty, but not necessarily my cup of tea. Here we have Crown Jewel, which for a very long time was one of the best purples I had in my collection. And you know what? I think it still might be. It's a dark purple. It's got a cool tone. It is satin, though. If this had been a matte, I think I might have liked it better. I'm not gonna lie. And in the viewfinder, it looks a little weird, but in real life, it's just a really pretty cool tone purple. This is Earthshine, which has also been one of my favorites. And this, 
Ooh, you can already see it right there. It's got that purple, like pink base, but then it's got that blue sheen to it. It's very pretty. Like this is another one, like a really, really good shade. Again, this is very unique compared to everything else I already own. Maybe not anymore. So this is definitely one that I, you know, if this were a declutter, it's not. <laughs> I would have to definitely swatch it against some other things I have, but this is pretty. 143 is one that I know I can get rid of. This is like pink purple, and I don't love those kind of shades. I know that now. I didn't at the time. I mean, is it pretty? Is it pigmented? Yeah, for sure, but I mean, this is just not, it just clashes too much with my skin tone, you guys. I don't love this. This is Try Me. Now, if I were to go purple, I want it to be this. This is a really good purple matte. This just may have to go into my uh, blue-green purple palette from now on because it's a good purple matte. This is Sleeper, which I was hoping to be like a really dark, deep purple, but it's just a bit too warm tone for my liking. I believe this was in the It's My Pleasure, I believe. Like, look at how red tone that is on my skin tone. It's just not pretty. Final four shades. This is Prowlin'. And this is very pretty. It's like a pinky mauve, but then it has that golden undertone. I think we have seen things like this in palettes by now, but this is one of those things where I'm like, you know, if I just pop this in my Cool Tone Neutrals palette, I think I'd love it. I was waiting for this one to come up. This is Mr. Sandman. This was again also in one of their nine pan palettes. I don't remember which one. This is very pretty, but it's more rose gold than I'd like it to be. Like it does have a really pretty sheen. But again, by now I have other multi-chrome things in my collection that I like a lot more than I do this, but it's pretty. This is silver lining. It's pretty, but it's just not that intense. It just isn't. And the final shade I have for you is Paradiso. And this is again, far too warm tone for my liking. I mean, again, it's very pretty, but it's like more of a raspberry almost. Like it's got that very purpley pink tone to it again, which a lot of the ColourPop purples also have in their palettes, which is why I don't love ColourPop purples to begin with. But yeah, this was the second palette swatch out. So let me put it back together. So those were all of the swatches with my two ColourPop palettes. I really hoped you enjoyed watching today's video. This video is going to be the last one, as I already mentioned, in my like single swatching video. Next year, I'm gonna do another series where I am still going to be probably talk about a lot of singles. Um, so you're, you're just gonna have to stay tuned for what else I have in store for you. And you can definitely look forward to like a makeup collection series and a decluttering series all within the first few months of the year for sure. But let's wrap up 2022 first because we're currently in the midst of doing all of my favorites of the year as well. So if you wanna know what my favorite eyeshadow palettes were, or my favorite foundations and stuff like that, then that's all coming up this, this week. Some of those videos will already have gone up by the time you're watching this. So definitely stay tuned for all of that goodness. Thank you so very much for joining me today and then I hope to see you again in my new in my next video. Bye bye.